Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some of these questions here in Unit 5. This is a question number uh, 1G. Okay, this is Lesson 3. Um, what we want to do is look at some strategies in terms of how we can solve these quadratic equations. So in question G, the first thing we notice is that we don't have um, a C term in this quadratic um, expression. So what should we do first? Well, the very first thing you should always try to do is take out a GCF. So is there a common factor that we can take out of here? Okay, and the answer is yes. We can take out a three and an X. Okay, but we can also take out the negative sign because sometimes it's easier to work with a positive expression. So let's factor out a negative 3x out of each term and that will leave us with 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now how do we solve this equation? Well we have two factors here, the negative 3x and the 3x plus 2. So we just simply set each one to be equal to 0. So we'll do 3x is equal to 0, okay, and then 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So this means our solution here for one case is x is equal to 0. And for the other one, we'll just move negative 2 over to the right side, which will give us 3x is equal to negative 2, or x is equal to negative 2 thirds. So the two roots that you want to uh, find in this question are simply x is equal to 0, okay, and x is equal to negative 2 thirds. Now let's look at question H. Okay, so question H has the C term in the quadratic. It's the constant. So we have 8x squared minus 10x minus 3 all equal to 0. So the first thing let's ask ourselves is can you do a GCF? Okay, and the answer is no. There is no greatest common factor we can take out of each term. So what we have here is a trinomial that we need to factor into hopefully two binomial terms. Okay, so let's start setting up our binomial brackets. So I'm just gonna do a couple of large ones here. K is equal to zero. So the goal here is, is that we have um, a term here at the end and the negative three and a middle term 10 and then the beginning term eight. So what we're looking to find here is we're looking for um, two numbers that will multiply to give us negative three. So I'll just do this on the side here. We're going to find two numbers that have to simultaneously add to negative 10. Okay, and then also two numbers that need to multiply to give us positive eight. Okay, so we're looking for those pairs that are, that's going to work that way. So the first thing we'll take a look at here is, well, for two numbers that multiply to give us negative three, okay, one of those numbers is gonna have to be a positive and one's gonna have to be a negative. So we can start by putting down a three and a one, okay, because there's no other two factors that can give us a negative three. Then we have to figure out the sum that's going to give us negative 10, but we need to have the other two terms in there, okay, and that has to be a multiple of eight. So what are the factors that can give us um, to multiply to give us eight? Well, we could have um, one times eight, we could have two times four, or we could reverse those terms. Okay, so let's start by just putting in the one and the eight. So if we put in an x by itself, that's one x, and then we have eight x here. Okay, so then let's test to see whether we have the middle term equal negative 10. So the way you do that is we multiply the two inside terms, which is going to give us 24. Okay, and then we multiply the two outside terms, which is going to give us negative one. Okay, and then we simply add them up. So 24 plus negative one is going to give us 23. So that's nowhere close to negative 10. So we know that those, that eight and one combination isn't going to work. So let me just erase that. Okay, and then let's try another combination here. So we'll get rid of that. Now we know the negative three is still gonna be okay. So let's try two and a four. Okay, so we'll do two x and four x. So what do we get here? Well, we have um, three times four, which is 12. Okay, and then two times negative one, which is negative two. So we have a 12 plus negative two, which is positive 10. 
So positive 10 is close, but we're looking for a negative 10. So what do you think we could do in order to make that a positive 10? Okay, so let's just erase those steps again. Okay, and then think about what could we do here? Well, we could try switching around one of the terms. Okay, so let's just erase the 4x and the 2x. Okay, and instead of putting the 4 there, let's move the 4 to the first term here and the 2x here. Now if we do our check, 2, th two times 3, which is positive 6, okay, and then 4 times negative 1, which is going to be negative 4, but that still doesn't quite work. Okay, so that's going to be negative 4, so in 6 plus 4 is positive 2. So it looks like we were closer last time. Okay, so one last thing to try here is <clears throat> what if we tried to switch the signs around here? Um, so let's erase those and let's put in a plus 3 here and a minus 1 there. And does that change anything for us? And if we look at it, it's no, it's still not, not going to be this work. So let's go back <clears throat> and let's try something else here. So let's erase the 4x. Oops, put that back in here. Erase the 4x and let's put the 4x here. and the 2x here, okay, which is what we had before, but let's reverse the signs around here. So let's just make that a plus one here and a minus three there. Okay, so minus three times one is still gonna give us negative three, but now our inside term is negative 12, and our 2x times one term is going to give us two. So negative 12 plus two is going to give us negative 10. So this is the correct solution here. Okay, so I'm just going to erase this out. Okay, and then this is what we're looking for um, in terms of our factored form. So you can see we did a little bit of trial and error to get that to work. So what is our final solution here? Well, we just need to set each term to zero. 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. 4x plus 1 is equal to zero. x is equal to 3 over 2. And x is equal to negative 1 divided by 4. So those would be our two roots um, when we do that question. Okay, so remember, it's um, <clears throat> to do this the factoring sometimes takes a little bit of trial and error. Um, in the original step, you probably could have saw that if we had just reversed the signs, um, things would have worked out um, a little bit faster. But I just wanted you to see that you can try a whole bunch of different combinations to get them to work. Okay, and then if we look at question I again here, what would we do to question I in order to begin to solve that? Well, there is a constant term here. So what you want to do is rewrite this question so that it is equal to zero. And then this way we now have our terms. So what we want to find, okay, is we want two terms to multiply to give us to negative two. We want to add two terms to give them negative one. And then we have to find two factors that multiply to give us 15. Okay, so this question works exactly the same as H, so I will just leave you for that to try.